Hello everyone and welcome to this video. We will learn about similar figures in this video. In the previous classes, you have studied what is congruency. Now, can you identify congruent figures from the given figures? Pause the video to solve the question and then check your answer. Now, identify the congruent figures from the given figures. You can see that if figure 5 is rotated by 180 degree, then it is congruent to figure 1. Similarly, if figure 7 is rotated by 180 degree, then it is congruent to figure 3. If we look at figures 2 and 6 and figures 4 and 8, we can see that they are congruent to each other through overlapping. Points to note Those shapes that have the same shape and the same size are congruent figures. Let's look at another example. There are two similar shape figures here. Can you call them congruent shapes? Pause the video for this and then check your answer. No, they are not congruent. Because by overlapping, we can see that they are not covering each other perfectly, although both the figures are of the same shape. If you look carefully, you will find that the side of the smaller square is half the side of the larger square. Now, if we look at the angles of these squares, we will find that their corresponding angles are equal. Since the corresponding sides of these two figures are equal in proportion and their corresponding angles are also equal, we call them similar figures. The shapes whose corresponding sides and corresponding angles are of equal proportions are called similar figures. Now, can you match similar figures from these figures? In this video, we studied similar figures. In the next video, we will see some interesting examples based on it. Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In the previous video, we studied about similar figures. Now, we will see some examples based on it. Look at these two triangles. What can you tell about them? These are isosceles triangles. Their two sides have equal lengths. These are not congruent because they have different corresponding sides and angles, but are these figures similar? Let's see. Polygons with any two sides on the same side are similar if their corresponding angles are equal and the ratio of their corresponding sides are same. Let's first see the ratio of the corresponding sides in these triangles. These are not equal. That is, the condition of similarity is not being fulfilled. So, they are not similar. If we also look at their corresponding angles, then they are different too. So, the two conditions of being similar here are not satisfied. We can say that here, the isosceles triangles are not similar. Come on, let's look at one more example. Deepak was looking at gifts received on his birthday. In these, he got a chessboard and a photo frame. Which figure can you see on the screen? Can you tell 
whether they are similar or not? He puts them on paper and draws their figure. Suppose we represent the chessboard as figure 1, A, B, C, D, and represent the photo frame as figure 2, P, Q, R, S. We can see that the number of sides in both figures is the same. To know if any two figures are similar, we check the ratio of their corresponding sides and the corresponding angles. Ratio of the length of the corresponding sides of the two similar figures will be as follows. Which are equal. Now we see their corresponding angles. All the angles of the figure 1 are right angles. But all the angles of the figure 2 are not right angles. So, the second condition of symmetry is not fulfilled. Therefore, the figure 1 and the figure 2 are not similar. We can say that figure 1 is square. But can you tell which type of polygon is figure 2? It is a rhombus. Like all the sides of the square, the sides are equal, but there is no right angle. In this video, we saw some examples of similar figures. So I hope that you have understood about similar figures through this video. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned about the meaning of similarity and similar shapes. Now, we'll move forward. We'll learn about the similarity of triangles. Here, we have two triangles, ABC and PQR. Can you name the corresponding angles of these triangles? Absolutely correct. Here, angles ABC and PQR, angles BCA and QRP, and angles CAB and RPQ are the corresponding angles. When we observe the triangles ABC and PQR, we notice that their corresponding angles are equal and their corresponding sides are proportional. In the previous video, we learned that two polygons are similar if their corresponding angles are equal and their corresponding sides are proportional. Hence, these two triangles will be similar. We represent the similarity between two polygons by this symbol. Famous mathematician Thales has given a conclusion by using the basic proportionality theorem that the ratio of any two corresponding sides in two equiangular triangles is always the same. Can you tell what are equiangular triangles? Triangles which have equal corresponding angles are called equiangular triangles. Now let's understand the basic proportionality theorem with an activity. Let's take a triangle shaped piece of paper. Let's call it ABC. When we measure the sides of this triangle, we find that AB is equal to 14 centimeters, BC is equal to 35 centimeters and AC is equal to 21 centimeters. Now let's take a point T anywhere on the triangle. And we draw a line parallel to line BC through the point T, which cuts the sides 
AB and AC at points M and N respectively. And point M divides the side AB into two parts AM and MB. And point N divides the side AC into two parts AN and NC. As you can see, here we get a new triangle AMN. If we measure the sides of triangle AMN, AM measures 6 cm, AN measures 9 and MN measures 15 cm. Can you comment on the sides AB and AC? Can you find the length of sides MB and NC? This can be done with the help of a scale or in this manner as well. If you pay attention, you will find that AM, MB and AN, NC are mutually proportional. Based on this activity, we can say that if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle to intersect the other two sides at distinct points, these two sides are divided in the same ratio. And this is known as the basic proportionality theorem. Can you test the converse of this theorem? Will this also be true? If a line divides any two sides of the triangle in the same ratio, then this line is parallel to the third side of the triangle. Today, in this video, we learned about similarity, similar triangles and the basic proportionality theorem. In the next video, we will look at some examples based on this. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned about similarity of triangles, proportionality of triangles and basic proportionality theorem. Today, we will look at some interesting examples based on it. Nakul was standing below a pole built in his school. The length of his shadow was 4 feet and the length of the shadow of the pole was 7 feet. He sees that the lines connecting the ends of the two shadows at their maximum heights were parallel to each other. If the height of Nakul is 5 feet, then find the height of the pole. Can you find this? You may think that it is not possible to do this without a ladder and a scale. But solving this and such similar questions becomes easy with the help of basic proportionality theorem. If you observe carefully, you will notice two triangles ABC and DBE here, in which AC and DE are parallel to each other, where AC and DE are the lines connecting the ends of the shadows of Nakul and the pole to their maximum height. We assume that the height of the pole to be X, which we have to find out. BE is the height of Nakul, BC is the height of the pole, DB is the shadow of Nakul and AB is the shadow of the pole. Looking at this picture, we can say that line DE intersects the sides AB and BC of the triangle ABC at points D and E respectively, which is parallel to the third side AC of triangle ABC. Can you find the value of x? For this, we can use the basic proportionality theorem, according to which, if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle to intersect the other two sides in distinct points, then the other two sides are divided in the same ratio. In this triangle, Sides AC and DE are parallel, hence the ratio of BE and EC would be equal to the ratio of BD and DA. Now, we substitute all the values. 
Can you now think of a method to find the value of dA? You can find the value of dA as follows. Substituting this value of dA, we get x is equal to 8.75. Therefore, the height of the pole would be 8.75 feet. In this example, you saw how we can use the basic proportionality theorem in our day-to-day -day life as well. Let's look at another example. With the help of this figure, prove that in triangle XYZ, lines YZ and MP are parallel to each other. What can you tell by looking at the figure? The similar arrow marks in the figure indicate that these lines are mutually parallel. We have been asked to prove that the lines YZ and MP are parallel. How can we prove this? If we observe the triangle XOY, we get to know that the line MN is parallel to the line YO. Hence, according to the basic proportionality theorem, XM by MY equals XN by NO, which is represented by equation 1. Similarly, we can derive equation 2 from the triangle XOZ. From equation 1 and 2, we get XM by MY equals XP by PZ, which we represent by equation 3. Now if we look at triangle XYZ, with the help of equation 3, we can say that the line MP divides the sides XY and XZ in the same ratio. Hence, according to the converse of basic proportionality theorem, we can say lines MP and YZ are parallel to each other. Today, in this video, we saw examples based on basic proportionality theorem. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we looked at some of the examples based on the basic proportionality theorem. In this video, we'll look at one more example on similarity of triangles. Find the value of A in the triangle XYZ. To solve this question, pause this video and match your answer. How can we find the value of A? You can see that the line PQ divides the sides XZ and YZ into two parts. The arrow marks here show that lines X, Y and PQ are parallel lines. Hence, according to the basic proportionality theorem, we can say that in triangle XYZ, XP, PZ and YQ, QZ will be proportional. Can you guess the next step? In the figure, we can see that xp is equal to a plus 3, pz is equal to 3a plus 19, yq is equal to a, and qz is equal to 3a plus 4. On cross-multiplying and solving, we get a is equal to 2. In this video, we saw examples based on basic proportionality theorem. Hope you have understood this concept well. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned about similarity, similar triangles, and basic proportionality theorem. In this video, 
we will learn the angle 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 or aaa criteria for similarity of triangles when do we say that the given two triangles abc and pqr are similar in the previous video we saw that two triangles are said to be similar when their corresponding angles are equal and their corresponding sides are proportional now a question that arises is that for testing the similarity of triangles should we always have to check if the pairs of corresponding angles are the same and the ratio of their corresponding sides are also the same let's take the help of some equiangular triangles can you tell which of these triangles would be equiangular triangles absolutely correct the triangles whose corresponding angles are equal are called equiangular triangles let the value of the corresponding angles of all triangles be 80 60 and 40 degrees respectively if we notice triangles abc and pqr we see that their corresponding sides ab and pq or bc and qr and ca and rp are all in the ratio of 1 by 2 now if we observe the triangle abc and xyz then we see that their corresponding sides are proportional Can you tell the ratio of the corresponding sides of triangles MNO and PQR? If we look at these two triangles MNO and PQR then we see that the ratio of the corresponding sides is 3 by 2. In this way if we take any two similar triangles then we see that the corresponding sides are proportional This activity teaches us about similarity of two triangles This activity leads us to the conclusion that if in any two triangles if the corresponding angles are equal then their corresponding sides are in the same proportion or ratio and hence the two triangles are similar this criteria of similarity of triangles is called the aaa criteria here we can say that equiangular triangles are similar in this video We studied about the AAA criteria for similarity of triangles. In the next video, we will look at some interesting examples based on this theorem. Welcome to this video. In the previous video we learned about the AAA criteria for determining similarity of triangles. Today in this video we will look at some interesting examples based on it. In the given figure show that triangles XYZ and DEF are similar to each other. What can you say by looking at the figure? You can see in the figure that the corresponding angles angle ZXY and FDE and angles YZX and EFD are equal. Can we prove the similarity of triangles with the help of these two angles? 
No, for doing this, we need to know the third angle or the corresponding sides of the triangle. Can we find any other measurement of this triangle? In the given figure, it's difficult to determine the length of the sides. But we can find the measurement of the third angle. Can you tell how? We know that the sum of all the internal angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. With the help of this, we can find the measurement of the third angle. Here, we see that the corresponding angles of the triangle XYZ and DEF are equal. That is, by AAA criteria, triangles XYZ and DEF are similar. Can we solve this by any other method? If we observe this example, then we'll see that in two triangles, if any two corresponding angles are the same, then their third corresponding angle would also be the same. Hence, we can conclude that two triangles are similar if they have two corresponding angles that are congruent or equal in measure. We call this the AA criteria for similarity of triangles. We can test this with the help of any other pair of triangles. In today's video, we looked at an example based on the AAA criteria of similarity of triangles and also studied the AA criteria. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we studied the AAA and the AA criteria. In this video, we will look at another example based on it. In the given figure, triangles FEC and GDB are congruent and angles 1 and 2 are similar. Show that triangles ADE and ABC are similar triangles. From the question, we know that triangles FEC and GDB are congruent and angles 1 and 2 are equal. Because triangles FEC and GDB are congruent, we know that corresponding sides of congruent triangles are equal, by which we get equation 1. Now, if we look at the triangle ADE, we get to know that angles 1 and 2 are the same. You would remember that the sides opposite to the equal angles in a triangle are also equal. Hence, sides AD and AE would be equal. If we find the ratio of equations 1 and 2, then we get equation 3. Equation 3 tells us that the line DE divides the sides AB and AC of triangle ABC into equal ratios. What do you understand from this? According to the inverse of the basic proportionality theorem, we can say that the lines DE and BC are parallel lines, because of which angle 1 is equal to angle 3 and angle 2 is equal to angle 4. Can you tell why? As we know that the angles corresponding to the parallel sides are equal, because of which in triangles ADE and ABC, angles 1 and angle 3 and angles 2 and angle 4 are equal. Hence, by the AA criteria, 
triangles ADE and ABC become similar. This is what we had to prove. In this video, we saw how to determine if triangles are similar by using the basic proportionality theorem and the AA criteria. I hope that you have understood the AA criteria well. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned about the AAA criterion of similar triangles for similarity of the triangles. Today, we will learn the side 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 criteria, that is, SSS criteria for similarity of the triangles. As we all know, the figures with equal ratio of corresponding sides and the equal corresponding angles are similar to each other. You are given some triangles here. Are all the corresponding angles of these triangles equal? And what do you understand by the corresponding sides of these triangles? To understand this, we will take triangles ABC and LMN. What do you understand by these two triangles? If we look carefully, corresponding sides AB, LM, BC, MN and CA, NL, their ratios are equal to 1 by 2. Now, what can you say about the angles of these two triangles? Yes, if you measure, then you will see that the corresponding angles are equal. By this, we can see that triangles ABC and LMN are similar to each other. Can you tell if triangles ABC and D, F are similar? You are absolutely correct. The ratios of the corresponding sides of both the triangles are 1 by 8. And if we talk about the angles then, the corresponding angles of these triangles are also equal. This way, we can say that triangles ABC and DEF are also similar. Similarly, if we take any two triangles from these then, the ratios of their corresponding sides and the corresponding angles are equal. Hence, we can say that in any two triangles, if the corresponding sides are in the same ratios, then their corresponding angles will always be equal. By which, we can say that they are similar triangles. In this video, we learned the side 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 or SSS criteria for the similarity of triangles. Can you test the similarity of triangles around you in real life? In the next video, we will look at an interesting example based on this. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned about the SSS criteria of similarity of triangles. Today, we will look at some interesting examples based on the SSS criteria of similarity. 
Raju on his way sees a signboard. As he walks further for some time, he sees another signboard and thinks that the first board looked somewhat like the second one. He takes the measurement of the board in his diary and moves on. After some time, he sees the third signboard and takes its measurement also and notes them into his diary. He wonders if all these triangular signboards are similar or not. Let's see. In triangles ABC and PQR, the ratio of corresponding sides AB and PQ is found to be 2 by 3. Can you tell the ratio of BC by QR and CA by RP? Correct. Their ratio is equal to 2 by 3. Here, we saw that the ratio of the corresponding sides are equal. Hence, we can say that the triangles ABC and PQR are similar by the SSS criteria. Let's look at another example. Show that the triangles DEF and OPD are similar in the given figure. What can you say by looking at the figure? We can see in the figure that the ratio of the corresponding sides DE and OP in these two triangles comes out to be 3 by 5. Now, can you tell the ratio of the sides EF and PD? Very good! For this, we need to find the length of side PD first. If we pay attention, then we will see that in side PD, the sum of sides PF and FD is 25. Therefore, the ratio of EF and PD is also 3 by 5. Like this, the ratio of FD and DO also comes out to be equal to this value. Hence, we can say that triangles DEF and OPD are similar by the SSS criteria. In this video, we looked at some examples based on the SSS criteria. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we looked at some examples based on the side 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 criteria for similarity of triangles. Today, we will look at some other examples based on the side 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 criteria. The diagonals of a rhombus measure 24 cm and 16 cm respectively. Find the length of the sides of the rhombus and also prove that all the four triangles in it are similar. Because we know that there are two diagonals in a rhombus. Hence, let diagonal ACB of 24 cm and diagonal BD be 16 cm long. We know that the diagonals of a rhombus divides each other into equal parts perpendicularly that is why angles AOB, BOC, COD and DOA are right angles. That is, they will be of 90 degrees. In this rhombus, which all triangles can you see? Correct. Here, we can see four triangles, namely triangles AOB, BOC, COD and triangle DOA. Since we need to find the sides of this rhombus, hence, if we take any one triangle, we can find the length of the sides of the rhombus. Come on, let's discuss triangle AOB. In triangle AOB, we see that angle O 
is 90 degrees. Hence, we can say that this triangle is a right angle triangle. Therefore, using the Pythagorean theorem in this triangle, the length of the side AB is found to be 14.42 cm. Hence, for the rhombus, the lengths of the sides AB, BC, CD and DA would be 14.42 cm. Now, let's discuss the triangles AOB and COB. From these two triangles, we see that the ratio of corresponding sides AO by CO AB by CB and OB, which is the common side, are equal. Can you tell which criteria of similarity is shown by this? Correct. This represents the SSS criteria. Therefore, we can say that triangle AOB and COB are similar. Now, if we talk about triangle AOD and triangle COD. The ratio of their corresponding sides are also equal. Hence, you can see that the triangle AOD and triangle COD are also similar by the SSS criteria. This way, we can test the similarity of any two triangles in this rhombus. And we can say that all the four triangles, triangle AOB, triangle COB, triangle COD and triangle AOD are similar. In the given similar triangles LMN and PQR, NO and RS are their medians respectively, where LM by QP equals LN by QR equals MN by PR and NO by RS equals LM by QP. Then, prove that triangles NOM and RSP are similar to each other. Hence, from equations 1 and 2, we can say that NO by RS equals MN by PR, which is represented by equation 3. Because from the figure, we can say that points O and S are the midpoints of LM and QP respectively. Hence, 2OM by 2SP equals MN by PR, which we represent by equation 4. If we compare equations 3 and 4, then we get NO by RS equals MN by PR equals OM by SP. Therefore, by SSS criteria, we can say that triangles NOM and RSP are similar. Today, we saw some interesting examples based on the side 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 criteria. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned the SSS criteria of similarity of triangles. In this video, we will look at the side angle side, SAS criteria. What can you say about the first statement? The first statement is correct. Can you tell why? According to the AAA criteria, 
any two triangles whose corresponding angles are equal are similar to each other. Very good. Now, is statement 2 correct or incorrect? According to the AA criteria, this statement is also correct. I am leaving it on you to think how. Similarly, according to the SSS criteria, statement 3 is also correct. What can you say about the fourth statement? In this statement, it is said that any two triangles whose one corresponding angle is equal and the sides including these angles are proportional will be similar. Whether it's true or not, we will find this by looking at an example. Shushma and Ashma were asked to make one triangle each by their teacher, for which the teacher gave them the measurement of two sides and the angle included in them. Shushma and Ashma made their triangles using the given measurement. After the triangles are made, the teacher asks them, what do they see in these two triangles? Shushma says that the sides of the triangles are proportional. Correct. Now the teacher asks them about the measurement of other angles. Both of them measure the angles using a protractor and they find out that the corresponding angles of the triangle are equal. Then Ashma says that according to the AAA criteria, the triangles ABC and MNP are similar to each other. Based on this activity, we can conclude that if one angle is equal to the corresponding angle of another triangle and the sides including these angles are proportional, then the triangles will be similar to each other. We call this theorem the side angle side, SAS criteria of similarity. Hence, according to the SAS criteria, we can say that statement 4 is true. In today's video, we learned about the side angle side SAS criteria of similarity. In the next video, we will look at some examples based on it. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned about the SAS criteria of similarity. Today, we will look at some examples based on this. Show that in triangles CDE and TUV, the proportion of sides DE and VU is 1 by 3. Pause the video to solve the question and match your answer. We need to prove in the given triangles CDE and TUV that the ratio of DE and VU is 1 by 3. Can you guess how we can do this? Correct! First, we need to test the similarity of the two triangles. In the given figure, side CD equals to 9 units and side EC equals to 10 units. UT equals 30 units and TV equals 27 units and also angle C equals angle T. We know that in triangles CDE and TUV, angles C and T are both the same. And also, the corresponding sides which contain these angles CD EC and TV UT are in the same ratio, which is 1 by 3. Hence, by the SAS criteria, we can say that the triangles CDE 
and TUV are similar to each other. We know that the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. Hence, the ratio of the corresponding sides DE and VU is 1 by 3. Let's look at another example. In triangle PQR, QN is perpendicular to PR. If the product of PN and NR is equal to the square of QN, then prove that the angle PQR equals 90 degrees. We need to prove that the angle PQR is equal to 90 degrees. We know that QN is perpendicular to PR. Hence, angles 1 and 2 are right angles and the product of PN and NR is equal to the square of QN in triangles PNQ and QNR. From equation 1, we can say that corresponding sides PN by QN and NQ by NR are proportional to each other. We know that the corresponding angles 1 and 2 are equal. Hence, by the SAS criteria, we can say that P and Q and Q and R are similar to each other. Because we know that the corresponding angles of similar triangles are equal. By which we get the equation 2. We know that the sum of all the angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Hence, in triangle P and Q, the product of X and Y would be 90 degrees. And in the given figure, we can see that the angle PQR is the sum of X and Y. Hence, angle PQR will be equal to 90 degrees. And this is what we had to prove. I hope you too solve this question the same way. In this video, we saw few interesting examples based on the SAS criteria of similarity. Welcome all of you in this video. In the previous videos, we have learned about the similarity of triangles and the criteria related to them. Today, we will see some examples based on similarity of triangles. If triangle ABC and triangle MNP are similar, then find the ratio of their perimeters. Suppose in triangle ABC, AB is equal to A, BC is B, and CA is C. Also in triangle MNP, MN is equal to X, NP is equal to Y, and PM is equal to Z. We already know that triangle ABC and triangle MNP are similar triangles. That means their corresponding sides will be in the same ratio. Let it be M. Therefore, we get the equations 1, 2 and 3. We have learned in our previous class that the perimeter of a triangle is equal to the sum of its sides. According to it, we get the equations 4 and 5. From equations 1, 2 and 3, substituting the values of A, B and C in equation 4 and solving it, we will get the equation 6. From the equations 5 and 6, we can say that the ratio of the perimeters of these two triangles is M. This is the answer to our question. If we observe carefully, we can see that the ratio of the perimeters of triangles ABC and MNP is equal to the ratio of their corresponding sides. Let us look at one more example. The perimeters of two similar triangles are 60 centimeter 
and 40 cm respectively. If the length of the first side of the second triangle is 16 cm, then find the length of the first side of the first triangle. Let us suppose that ABC and PQR are the similar triangles given in the question. From the given question, the perimeter of ABC is 60 cm and the perimeter of PQR is 40 cm. We also know that the first side of the second triangle, that is the length of PQ is 16 cm. And we need to find the length of the first side of AB of the first triangle. Can you tell me how to find this out? We already know that the ratio of perimeters of similar triangles is equal to the ratio of their corresponding sides. Therefore, we can say that the ratio of perimeters of triangles ABC and PQR is equal to the ratio of their corresponding sides AB and PQ. Substituting all the known values and solving We get AB is equal to 24 centimeter, which is our answer. Today we have learned about the relation between the perimeters of similar triangles and their corresponding sides. In the next video, we will learn some more examples related to similarity of triangles. Welcome all of you in this video. In our previous videos, we have learned about similarity of triangles and the criteria related to them. Today we will see some examples based on similarity of triangles. Two poles of length A meters and B meters are situated at a distance of P meters from each other. Two lines are drawn from the top of first pole to the bottom of the second pole and vice versa. Find the height of the intersecting point of those two lines. Let us suppose the height of the pole AB is A meters and the height of the pole CD is B meters and the distance between the two poles AC is P meters. Suppose the lines AD and BC intersect at point O. Let us draw a perpendicular from O to the side AC which gives the point L. If CL is equal to X and LA is equal to Y, then we need to find the length of OL. Suppose OL is H meters. If we look at the triangles ABC and LOC, the corresponding angles CAB and CLO are mutually equal. Also, angle C is common in both triangles, thus they are equal. Hence, According to AA criterion, the triangle CAB and the triangle CLO are similar. We already know that the corresponding sides of similar triangles are in proportion. That means CA and CL and AB and LO are proportional to each other. Substituting all the known values and solving them, we get the equation 1. Similarly, if you look at the triangles ALO, and ACD, the corresponding angles ALO and ACD are equal. Also, angle A is common in both triangles, thus equal. Hence, according to AA criterion, the triangles ALO and the triangle ACD are similar. Therefore, we can say that the sides AL and AC and OL and DC are proportional to each other. Substituting all the known values and solving them, we get the equation 2. Adding the equations 1 and 2 and solving it further, we get H is equal to AB by A plus B. That means the height of the intersecting point is H is equal to AB by A plus B. Today we have seen examples 
based on similarity of triangles. We hope that you have understood similarity of triangles very well. Welcome to this video. So far, we have studied the criteria of similar triangles. Today, we will learn about areas of similar triangles. What do you understand by observing the given triangles? These are similar triangles because the ratios of their corresponding sides are the same. But can you tell the relation between the ratio of the corresponding sides and the area of the triangle? Let's discuss this. Triangle ABC and triangle XYZ are two similar triangles. We have to find the relation between the ratio of the sides and the area. Hence, first of all, we will find the area of the triangles. Let us draw the altitude of both the triangles, that is, the altitude AM on the side BC and the altitude XO on the side YZ. Can you tell the measure of angles AMC and XOZ? Correct. Since AM and XO are the altitudes of the triangle, the angles AMC and XOZ will be 90 degrees. Now, can you find the area of these two triangles? Correct. The area of triangle ABC is half multiplied by BC multiplied by AM. And the area of triangle XYZ is obtained by half multiplied by YZ multiplied by XO. Since we have to find the relation between the ratio of the corresponding sides and the area of the triangles, we find the ratio between the areas of triangle ABC and triangle XYZ which is represented by equation 3. Now, let us discuss triangle ABM and triangle XYO. Here, we see that angle B is equal to angle Y because these are corresponding angles of similar triangles ABC and XYZ and angle M is equal to angle O because angle M and angle O are right angles. Can you find if triangles ABM and XYO are similar? Good! These are similar according to the AA criteria of triangles. Hence, the ratio of corresponding sides AM and XO and sides AB and XY will be equal. We are given that triangle ABC and triangle XYZ are similar triangles. Therefore, the ratio of the corresponding sides will be the same. In equation 3, in place of BC by YZ, from equation 5, AB by XY, and in equation 4, in place of AM by XO. Putting AB by XY, we get the ratio between the areas of triangle ABC and triangle XYZ as the squares of the sides AB by XY. So, using equation 5, we get this solution. That is, from the above solution, we can say that the ratio of the areas of two similar triangles is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. Today in this video, we learned about the area of similar triangles. In the next video, we will see interesting examples based on this. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we saw the relationship between the area of two similar triangles and their sides. Today, in this video, we will see some interesting examples based on this. The given triangle ABC and triangle DEF are two similar triangles with sides BC equals 3 cm, EF equals 2 cm. 
if the area of triangle ABC is 27 square centimeters, then can you find the area of triangle DEF? Let's solve this together. First, let's assume that the area of triangle DEF is x square centimeters. Now, we know that the ratio of the areas of two similar triangles is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. Using this theorem, we get equation 1. Can you tell how do we get the value of x from equation 1? Good! By cross multiplying the equation 1, we get the value of x as 12 square centimeters. So, we can say that the area of triangle DEF is 12 square centimeters. Let's see another example. In the given triangle LMN, angle M is 90 degrees, LM equals 12 centimeters, and LN equals 15 centimeters. Points O and P are points on LM and LN respectively, such that angle LPO is 90 degrees and OP equals 3 cm. So, with the help of the figure, can you find the area of triangle LMN and the area of triangle LOP? Let's solve this. As given, triangle LMN is a right angle triangle. So, using the Pythagoras theorem in triangle LMN, The value of Mn is 9 cm. Since we have to find the area of triangle LMN, therefore, by placing the values of Lm and Mn in the formula area, area of triangle LMN is 54 square centimeters. Now if we talk about triangle LPO and triangle LMN, what can you say by observing them? Correct. Angle L in both the triangles is the common angle. And angle LPO and angle LMN are right angles. Can you now identify the similarity of triangle LPO and triangle LMN? Good. Both these triangles are similar according to the AA criteria where side PO and side MN are proportional corresponding sides. We are sure you remember that the ratio of the areas of two similar triangles is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. Hence, from the similar triangles LPO and LMN, we get the equation 3. Putting the value of the area of triangle LMN and side PO, we get the area of triangle LPO as 6 square centimeters. Today, in this video, we saw some examples related to the area of similar triangles. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we saw some examples related to area of similar triangles. In this video, we will see another interesting example based on this. In the given triangle PQR, if XY is parallel to QR and the area of triangle PXY is half the area of triangle PQR, then find the value of Qx by Pq. According to the question, we know that xy is parallel to qr and the area of triangle pxy is half the area of triangle pqr. Hence, from equation 1, we can say that the area of triangle pqr will be twice the area of triangle pxy. Observing the figure, we can say that xy is parallel to qr, pu is the transversal, so angle pxy will be equal to the angle pqr. 
Can you say if any other angle of triangles PXY and PQR are equal? Correct. In triangle PXY and triangle PQR, angle P is the common angle. So angle XPY will be equal to the angle QPR. So according to the AA criteria of similarity of triangles, we can say the triangle PXY and triangle PQR are similar triangles. Since we know that the ratio of the areas of two similar triangles is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides, hence, from triangles PXY and PQR, we see that the ratio of their areas will be equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides PX and PQ. With the help of equation 1, we see that by taking the square root of both the sides, we get the square root of 2 multiplied by Px is equal to Pq. Since we have to find the value of Qx by Pq, then can you tell us how we will write the segment Px? Correct answer. Segment Px can be written as Pq minus Qx. On solving this, we can say that the value of Qx by Pq is obtained as the square root of 2 minus 1 upon the square root of 2. So I hope you would have understood the relationship between the area of similar triangles and their sides. Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned about the area of an equilateral triangle. In this video, we will study the outcome of dropping a perpendicular to the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Can you tell me, out of these triangles, which triangle is a right angle triangle? Absolutely correct. Triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. If we drop a perpendicular to the hypotenuse BC, from the right angle of the triangle, which intersects the hypotenuse BC at point D, then how many triangles can you see in this triangle? Absolutely correct. Here, we get three triangles, triangle ABC, triangle ABD, and triangle ADC. We can see that all of these three triangles are right angle triangles. Can you tell why? Because AD is perpendicular to the side BC, and we know that perpendiculars intersect each other at 90 degrees, which is why triangle ABD and triangle ADC are also right angle. What else do you see in these triangles? Let's rotate the triangle ABC in such a way to observe and understand the triangles. If you consider the measurement of angle BCA as X in the triangle ABC, can you tell me what angle ABC will measure? You must remember that the sum of the measurement of all the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Therefore, the measure of the angle ABC will be 90 minus X. Similarly, the measurement of angle CAD in triangle ADC will also be 90 minus X. Similarly, can you tell the measurement of angle DAB in triangle ABD? Well done! The measurement of angle DAB will be X. Can we make any more observations of these triangles? For this, we focus on triangles ABC and ABD. You will see that angles ABC and DBA and angles BCA and BAD are equal. Hence, based on AA criteria, Triangle CAB and Triangle AB will be similar triangles. Similarly, you can check the similarity of Triangle CAB and ADC and Triangles BTA, 
and ADC. In this video, we learned that if a perpendicular is dropped on the hypotenuse from the right-angled vertex of a right-angled triangle, then the triangles on either side of this perpendicular are similar to each other Welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned that if a perpendicular is dropped from the right angle to the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, then the triangles thus formed are similar. Today, we will understand Pythagoras' theorem with its help. Can you tell from the previous class what is Pythagoras' theorem? Absolutely correct. According to the Pythagoras' theorem, in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of squares of the remaining two sides. Can you tell why? To understand this, we rotate our right angle triangle in this way. And then, from the right angle, we drop a perpendicular to the hypotenuse. As you know in the previous video, if a perpendicular is dropped at the hypotenuse from the right angled vertex of a right triangle, then the triangles on either side of this perpendicular are similar to the full right angle triangle and also mutually similar. From equation 1, we know that triangle ABC and triangle BDC are similar. Hence, side BC and side DC and also side CA and side CB will be mutually proportional. By cross multiplying, we get DC times AC is equal to BC square which we can show from equation 4. Similarly, with the help of equation 2, we get AC times AD equal to AB square, which we can show from equation 5. Now, if you add equation 4 and 5, we get DC times AC plus AC times AD equals BC square plus AB square. You can see that we get a common factor AC here which we can write like this. Now if we add sides DC and AD, we get side AC. On further solving, we get AC square equal to BC square plus AB square, where AC is hypotenuse of triangle ABC and also AB and BC are the remaining two sides of triangle. Thus, we can say that in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining two sides, which proves the Pythagoras theorem. In this video, we learnt the proof of Pythagoras theorem with the help of similar triangles. In the next video, we will see interesting examples based on the Pythagoras theorem. Welcome to yet another video. In the previous video, we understood the proof of Pythagoras theorem with the help of similar triangles. Today, we will see an example based on this. Angle N is a right angle in the right angle triangle MNP in which MR and PS are medians drawn from the vertices M and P respectively. If MP is equal to 5 cm, and MR is equal to 3 root of 5 by 2 centimeters, then find the length of PS. Pause the video to solve the question and match your answer later. Can you tell me how you can solve the question? Absolutely correct. First of all, we will draw a figure based on the information given in the question. So let's draw. From the question, we know that the triangle is a right angle triangle, so we draw a right angle triangle in which angle N is the right angle. Now from the points M and P, draw the medians MR and PS 
on their opposite sides NP and MN respectively, which divide the sides NP and MN respectively into two equal parts. Also, we know the measurements of the sides MP and MR because triangle MNP is right-angled at N. So, from the Pythagoras theorem, we can say that square of MP will be equal to the square of MN plus square of NP, denoted by equation 1. Similarly, in right-angle triangle MNR, square of MR will be equal to the square of MN plus square of NR. We know that NR and RP are two equal parts of NP. Hence, NR equals NP by 2. On further solving, we get equation 2. Similarly, we get equation 3 from right angle triangle NPS. By adding equations 2 and 3, we get this equation. Here, from equation 1, mn square plus np square can be replaced by the square of mp. Can you tell us what we should do next? Well done! Now, we will replace the values of mr and mp in this equation. We get PS square equal to 20. Taking square root of both sides, PS equals positive and negative 2 square root of 5. PS is the median of the triangle MNP whose length we have to find. Can the length be negative? Absolutely correct. Length cannot be negative. So, we will consider positive. So, the length of PS will be 2 square root of 5 centimeters. Hope that now you've understood the Pythagoras theorem well.